Hello everyone, welcome to questions and answers based on a course of computational finance. Today we have question number 17, which is based on materials covered in lecture number 7. The question of today is, can we model volatility with the arithmetic Brownian motion process? In the course we have learned a lot about the stochastic volatility models, like for example model of Heston, where we also have learned and we have seen the impact of uh, different model parameters on uh, implied volatility surface. And also we have illustrated what is the advantage of having a CIR type of, um, of process for volatility for the variance in the Heston model. The question here is, what if we would specify the volatility process not driven by any advanced and compli rather complicated CIR type of model, but keep it very simple. Let's take it only a normally distributed volatility process. So in a Heston model, we know that we have this square root of a variance, which and where the variance is driven by the CIR process. So this is the uh, mean reverting square root process. Uh, however, what would happen if we would take volatility not square root of V, but we would just take it as the uh, normally distributed process. So here is actually what is interesting is that this type of question or this type of problem has been already addressed in the literature, and that's called model of schobel zoo In schobel zoo model, the variance process or the volatility process is not given by the CIR or process that is only allows for positive realizations, but they have defined this uh, volatility to be, driven, to be driven by the OU process. So so-called olmsten umbeck process with... Uh, uh, you see that it's a normally distributed process with mean reversion parameter kappa, long-term volatility sigma bar, and volatility of volatility gamma. So you see this kind of model is much simpler uh, than the Heston model, at least it looks like it is. And the question is, is it actually, does it make sense to have volatility uh, to be normally distributed? Uh, of course, in the Black-Scholes model, we have this, uh, uh, as you remember, in Black-Scholes model, we have a DST, we have a here R, S, T, D, W, uh, sorry, this is the T term, D, T plus with sigma, S, T, D, W, T. So in Black-Scholes case, we would have sigma only to be constant. However, if we look here, sigma is multiplied by S. So actually what we can do, we can remove S here from here and divide it by S, T here. And actually what we will see is that sigma here is multiplied by Brownian motion. Brownian motion can take negative and positive values. So in essence, it should not matter if we would have a minus sign here. It still would be, because it's symmetric, it would not really matter in terms of simulating of paths because those quantities, this is symmetric around zero. So whether we take volatility to be positive or negative, that doesn't matter. Of course, interpretation is much more difficult to think about negative volatility. But if you look from this uh, perspective of a stochastic process, that should not matter so much. And this is the motivation for the schobel zoo model, where they specify the volatility by the normally distributed process. Uh, here, however, there is a little bit of more complexity. Uh, although this model seems to be much easier than a Heston model, it is not trivial. Uh, the problem is that if we look at this, uh, this structure, and if we perform a log transformation, then we will have this term, of course, this S will be gone from here, of course, also here, we will have only the dxt, so this will be x uh, t part, where that will be driven by e. Uh, this will be log of s t. Then what we will see is that if we build this covariance matrix based on this, uh, uh, these two processes, for the first one we will have a sigma squared t, and so this will be the term corresponding to this covariance term. So you see that actually this model is not affine because we have uh, affinity condition means that we should be linear in all the state variables. However, here the state variable is sigma, but if we look at the, uh, the covariance structure for, in the affine uh, models, so for those, if you don't remember, please revisit the lectures, but here this model is not affine, this, therefore we cannot find Cauchy function. However, what schobel zoo has have found is that this model is not affine in this way. However, if we would define a new variable, d v t or let's without d let's do v t equal to be sigma squared t and then if we applied eto formula to find this dynamics of this process 
then this quantity can be replaced by this new variable vt, and then it becomes affine. So actually, we start with a type of a simpler model for modeling of volatility because we just say it's only normally distributed, OU process, so it's very easy to follow. However, the model is not affine. To be affine, we have to define new variables, so we have to expand the space of state variables. Then we are actually able to find the KSC function. The problem here is that instead of having two stochastic differential equations, we end up with three stochastic differential equations. So this structure is much more involved, although it looks simpler initially. Once we go through all these derivations, it's much more involved compared to the Heston model. What is also the limiting case of this, this model, what is the problematic case, is that uh, the interpretation of the model parameters and their impact of, on implied volatility is much more convoluted compared to the Heston model. And the reason is that because we are dealing with this V process, so VT, which is sigma squared T, then the dynamics of this VT process is actually not as nice as we have it here. It's not mean reverting in a very clean uh, way how we have here mean reversion, long-term mean, and so on. Uh, in the lecture and actually also in the book, you can find derivations for this process and it's very, uh, it's not maybe terrible, however, it is uh, quite complicated. And this means that there is no clear and very simple interpretation as we would have for the Heston model. So then we have a lot of interplay between different model parameters, which makes it much more difficult to calibrate the model. So there is not enough flexibility in the model. So this is basically the bottom line. So we can actually consider model uh, with arithmetic Brownian motion for uh, volatility. Uh, in this case, actually, we considered OU process, so mean reverting process, uh, not uh, arithmetic Brownian motion. However, uh, it may be prob problematic, uh, especially if we talk about uh, calibration to the market data. So it is possible. However, it's not always desired because we may not be able to calibrate to the market data. And overall structure of the model can be much more convoluted compared to the uh, Heston model, which seems initially to be much more complicated, but then actually it's not so bad. So I hope it, uh, it explains the question and uh, see you next time. Bye bye.